Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm going to do a detailed review on this DeLonghi espresso machine and coffee maker all in one. Model number BCO430. The first part of the video I'm going to go over the espresso side. The second part I'll go over the coffee maker side. So for the espresso side, here's our porta filter. It does come with a single shot and a double shot. Here's the double shot filter. You're simply just going to put it in there. Now on the bottom there, make sure that black part is installed. That's how you take this apart. But there's like a notch, put it in the notch. You're gonna scoop out your, you're gonna put two scoops in there for the double shot. And then you're gonna tamp down the espresso grounds. It does have a milk frother, milk frothing wand. Let's just take a closer look at the overall coffee maker. So you do have, this slides out, it's called front access for the coffee maker. You got a number four cone filter reusable and a filter basket you're going to pour your water here it's going to go back there for the coffee maker you do have a glass carafe with a hinged lid it is 10 cups this is a 10 cup coffee maker that is a warming plate so let's take a look at each of the brew heads there's the coffee maker brew head there's where the hot water is going to come out for the espresso side here's a closer look at the milk frothing one it just goes in and out that's it doesn't tilt or anything Here's the knob. Make sure this knob is in the off position. When you want to use it for steamed milk, you're going to go to the on position. It does have a big power switch here. This is for the espresso side only. You do not need to turn this on to make coffee. Going around the back, this is the water reservoir for the espresso side. It's got this container that you can take out, fill it up. There's what it looks like down in there. And then reinstall it. So that's a very nice feature. I like that. For the coffee maker side, it's got a carbon water filter that you put in there. That's what, This filters the water for the coffee maker side. It's a very nice looking coffee maker. If we go around the back, it does have a big area for cord storage. It's got a nice long cord and it only takes a two prong outlet. Okay, so for the espresso side, I'm going to be using some espresso ground coffee. Okay, this is ground at like a powder. It's a really fine grind for espresso machines. And then I'm gonna be using medium grind coffee for the coffee maker side. This is like normal drip coffee maker that you would put in any uh, drip coffee maker. But the espresso side does take a little bit different type of a coffee, mainly the grind. You want a dark roast and a fine grind. Now I have been playing around with it and I did put uh, I did put ground coffee in here at, at a medium grind and it did okay. Not as good as with the espresso. Okay, so let's take a look at the porta filter. Again, you're going to put the filter in. This little lever is for when you want to go knock the puck out. When you've got the espresso in there and it's really hard to get out, you're going to beat it and get it out. But for brewing, you're going to have this back. I really like this scoop. So for the double shot, it says two scoops of coffee of espresso ground coffee. So there's one scoop and two scoops. Then you want to kind of make it nice and even. And then we're going to use this to tamp it. So put it on a flat surface. Again, here's the scoop and this is the tamper. It's a little flimsy, but it's got a nice flat surface. And this is what you're going to use to tamp it. Now it does, you can either knock all that off or put it in there and give it one nice even tamp. It says not to tamp it too hard, but I've been finding it takes a pretty good tamp. Okay, so make sure there's no espresso grounds on the outside here. Okay, so we're gonna turn the machine on. Turn this button on, this button stays in and that's gonna start warming up the espresso side. We know the espresso side is on because we've got this green light here but we need to wait for this little green light to come on. This, when we press this, this is what causes the espresso to come out. This is for the steam. This is for frothing milk. So this area right up here does get warm. So this would be a great area to, to preheat your mugs. Okay, so my green light came on. That took about 20 seconds. Move the milk frothing uh, wand out because that's gonna help get this in. Okay, so now let's put the porta filter in. You're gonna find there, it's gonna start off at like a 45 degree angle, not quite, and then you're gonna turn it. It's not real tight. You're gonna turn it until it's like a, a 90 degree angle coming out towards you. 
So now this is where the machine differs a little bit. You're gonna press this button to start the espresso, but you gotta, you're in control of how long the espresso lasts. Then you're gonna press the button again to stop it. Now during this, this green light's gonna stay on. That lets you know that the, temp, the water is up to the proper temperature for the espresso. But as the espresso goes through it, um, you're gonna find that, that that green light's gonna go out. And that's kind of what I use for determining when to turn it back off. So you're in complete control of, of the starting and the stopping. So let's press it. About 172 coming out. And then I'm going to press it again to stop it. Now that may not have been my best one. You know, have fun with espresso machines. They take a lot of work to kind of get it figured out. They can be kind of intimidating at first. But just play around with it. Take your time with it. Now I can't drink espresso straight like that. That is it's really strong and bitter for me. I have to mix it with a, a latte or a cappuccino milk. Okay, so now let's, let's take this out. And you do have some water on the top of here. Okay, so this is what you might do in a trash can. You're gonna turn it over and then you wanna get that, that, that puck out. It's easier if you just knock it with your hand like that. That causes that puck to come out. And you can recycle that or throw it away. Now you do have to rinse this out. Be careful, this can be hot and rinse this out. So something I forgot to go over, this does have a drip tray for the espresso side and it does fill up with water. So you gotta keep an eye on it. When it does fill up, that thing's gonna start to float and pop through this little thing to let you know that that's full. But I did about seven or eight espressos and this thing was already starting to get pretty full. So keep an eye, it's got a little port that goes back there and catches some of the water from the steam generator. So let's talk a little bit about the filter. This black thing, this just screws off. And then you can poke this out and you can take this all apart. This is just a rubber. And you can, if this clogs up, you can, you can unclog that and then line these up, put it back in there. And then this just screws on. The espresso is gonna come out of this little hole and this, these little side holes. But you really don't see this part because it's inside the porta filter. And that's a 51 millimeter tamp. So if you want to upgrade your tamper, 51 millimeter. Okay, so let's make another espresso. So if I left out a step that sometimes I don't always do, but they, they do want you to preheat the mug and the port of filter and filter. And the way you do that is um, don't put any espresso in here. Go ahead and put it in. You're gonna, just gonna run some hot water through it. Take your mug, put it down here. Go ahead and start the espresso, let some hot water run through the porta filter and the mug. Go ahead and stop it. Let it finish draining the water. Now you're simply just gonna throw that water out and then wipe it, just, you're always gonna have to have it, when you do espresso, you need to have a nice towel that you can be wiping stuff off with constantly because you're gonna have to dry out this porta filter, dry out your mug. So let's take the porta filter off. Again, dry that out really good. Now it's it's nice and hot, but you still have to dry it out. Okay, so I might have tamped that one too hard. I got this all wiped out. Let's put two of these scoops in. And make it nice and kind of level. And it says tamp. I'm just gonna give it a nice even tamp, not super hard. Again, make sure, whoops. Make sure there's none on the edges here. Okay. Go over to the machine. We're gonna put it in. I've got my mug. And again, I've got to start it and I've got to stop it. And again, make sure that green light was on. That green light on means that the water is ready to go. That one looks a little better. I 
and then I'm going to come up here and stop it. Yeah, this one looks a lot better. Probably should have stopped it a little sooner. Let's see what temperature we end up with. 177. So yeah, when you preheat everything, it in, oh, 182 almost. You end up with a lot hotter espresso shot. Okay, so let's take this out. Again, be careful. There is always some water up there, and that's really, really hot. Okay, so now let's switch gears. Let's go to the frother. Now, again, you got to have the big power switch on on the left-hand side here on. Make sure this switch is off. And now you're going to hit this, this froth, this uh, steam button. You're going to turn it on and wait for the green light to come on. It takes about 10 to 20 seconds. When the green light comes on, that lets you know that the steam is up to temperature. It says you might get a few drips coming out of the, where the espresso is. And you'll get some steam coming out of the drip tray. Okay, so the green light is on. I'm ready to go. I'm going to leave that button in while I do my frothing. Now, you do have to have a container. It's going to get really hot, so have a container with a handle. This does not come with it. You're going to put it in here. Now, I'm going to be using this and turning it to the on position. It's really just on or off. There is no, you can sort of control it. Now, this is an art all in itself. Try to show you. You want it just below the surface of the milk to kind of inject some air to get that foam. You don't want to do it too long. You can burn the milk, but the milk is going to increase in volume as it adds more air to it. Again, that's really hot steam coming out. And it comes out really forceful. Okay, I'm going to turn it off. Okay, so let me add some to my espresso. Huh, that was a lot of fun. I'm, I'm normally not any good at that. I've got a bunch of milk and froth left over, but there's a nice little cappuccino. Add a little syrup to it, vanilla or caramel. Here, I've got just some vanilla syrup. You can add any flavor you want. Just a little bit is all it takes. And just kind of stir that in. Let's give that a taste. Not bad. That's a really strong, that espresso is really strong in that. I would probably go a little bit less on the espresso time, not to dump as much espresso in there because that's a really strong, and add more milk. So your container size has a lot to do with it. This isn't probably the, the, the correct size for this type of drink. That's a pretty bitter drink still right now. I need to add a lot more milk to it and not as much espresso. So play around with it. These, these, can, be, these can be tricky to make. Um, and you can see I still have that button in and nothing's really happening. I turned it off with this switch right here, but let's, I want to show you the, there's the steam. So you got to be really careful with that. And it's a good idea to let that cool off and then this pulls down and then you got to clean that milk off of there. And then when you're done with the steam, just deselect that. Because when, when that's in, it's kind of in. Press it again, it's out. And now once you're done, you can just press that power button. This turns the espresso side off. You can still make a pot of coffee, but you can turn the espresso side off. Now, I did play around with this. I was making a pot of coffee earlier, and I was actually doing espresso too. So I don't know if they recommend you doing them both at the same time, but I was able to work this espresso side while, while it was brewing coffee. Dimensions really quick, you're right around 10 and a half front to back. Height wise, it's right around 13, but this lid in the back does have to lift off to about 16. And you know, you don't necessarily have to take this out. You could use a container just to pour water in here, but if you do have to lift it out, you do have to lift it out kind of high. And once in a while, you do have to lift this carbon water filter out to get it out. 
Okay, so let's make coffee on the coffee maker side. It takes any standard coffee for a drip coffee maker ground at a medium grind. So you're simply just gonna pull this open. This is gonna show you where the filter is. This is the coffee filter. You can use this reusable filter or a number four cone filter, paper. If you want to use a paper filter, you're just gonna put it in here like this. Make sure it's hugging the walls and you're gonna put your coffee grounds right there. But let's use the reusable filter that comes with it. You can never use both at the same time. It's either or. So I'm gonna brew some of this Kahlua coffee. It takes one tablespoon per cup we're gonna brew. So if I was only gonna brew a, a six cup pot of coffee, I would put six tablespoons of coffee in here and fill it up to the six mark. If I'm gonna do the full 10, I'm gonna put 10 tablespoons of coffee. Okay, so I've got my 10 tablespoons of coffee right here. I'm gonna pour the water right here. This is a little tray that's gonna direct the water. The water reservoir is actually way back here, but they call this a front access coffee maker, which is really nice. You can access everything from the front. It's got a nice big opening to pour the water. The craft pour is really nice. And again, I'm doing a full 10 cup pot. This coffee maker will brew. Whatever amount of water you put back there is what it's gonna brew. So let's close this. Make sure you close this all the way. Make sure the craft has its lid on. And again, there is a window on the side here to let you know exactly how much water you've added. So to use the coffee maker side, you do not have to have the espresso power switch on. It can be off. The coffee maker is this on off switch right here. You're simply just gonna press that Press it one time and the red light should stay on. That means the coffee maker has started. And again, this has got a glass craft, so it does have a warming plate that's gonna keep the coffee warm. And you can adjust that, how long that warming plate stays on from one minute to 12 hours. I've never seen a coffee maker that can go up to 12 hours of keeping the warming plate on. The one to four cup button is if you're just gonna put one to four cups of water in the back, and you're only gonna put one to four tablespoons of coffee in. That's a special type of brew that it kind of pauses. It'll brew for a little bit, pause, brew for a little bit, and pause. That's to help extract the coffee when you're doing such a small batch. Pressing that button does not mean it'll do one to four cups. It, it still brews whatever amount of water you put in the coffee maker every time you press the on button. It's a relatively quiet coffee maker at first. It starts brewing right away. Okay, so it's been brewing for about four minutes and we're just to the five cup mark. So let's see how hot the, the coffee coming out the bottom of it is. About 175. So we do get some steam out this little steam hole right here. The top of this does get a little hot. We do get a little bit of steam coming up here. Okay, so we're right around the eight minute mark and it is completely done brewing the 10 cups of coffee. It does not beep at you to let you know it's done. And this light stays on to let you know the warming plate is, is still on. Okay, so let's see how the craft pours. It pours really fast, so be careful. It does come out of there really quick. And we end up with, that's a really hot cup of coffee, 170 degree cup of coffee. A nice feature is you could preheat your mugs. This gets warm enough. You could put your mug up here to get it nice and hot. That way your coffee would be even hotter. Okay, so I've been drinking the coffee out of this. It tastes really good, especially that Kahlua coffee. I really like the taste of that. And I feel like this coffee maker does a good job brewing coffee. I love that it has a cone-shaped filter. I think cone-shaped filters do produce a better cup of coffee. With that reusable filter, you will get a little bit of sediment in the bottom of your glass. Um, that's okay. If you don't want the sediment, just use a paper filter. Okay, so we're going to open this up. Be careful. Here's how the coffee grounds did. So let this cool down. This is really hot, so be careful. But it looks like it did a pretty good job with the coffee grounds. They didn't overflow the filter basket. You can lift this handle up right here. and take this whole thing over to the trash can and empty out the, the coffee grounds. It won't drip on you because it's got that drip stop. The coffee maker will shut off automatically but according to whatever time you've got set. But if you want to turn it off on your own, just hit this button one more time and that turns the warming plate off now. 
Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to set the, uh, adjust the warming plate auto off time. The default is two hours. So after two hours, this coffee maker will shut off. If you turn this coffee maker off, make sure that red light's not on. Press and hold the on off button until those digits starts flashing. Okay, that's how many hours it's set. So now I can change it. I can go all the way up to 12 hours, well, 11 hours and 59 minutes. Or I can go one hour, two hour, three hours. That's how long the warming plate stays on. I can even do minutes, seven hours, five minutes. 11 hours, you gotta go all the way to 59 minutes to get 12 hours. But if you go to zero, you can go all the way to zero, 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 one. So that way it shuts off automatically as soon as the coffee maker is done. Again, if you wanna set it, press and hold until they start flashing. And then just let it stop, let it stop flashing and it'll memorize that. Time. That's the time that the coffee maker will shut off. The amount of hours it stays on. Cleanup on the coffee maker is very simple. All these parts are dishwasher safe. You can't even take the lid off. It snaps off really easy. I really like this coffee maker. I thought it made a great pot of coffee. It was very fast on the coffee maker side. The espresso side, um, it makes a very nice espresso. Frothing the milk can be a little tricky. It takes some practice. Learning when to turn the espresso on or off um, can take some practice also. It's a fast. The espresso side heats up very quick. Everything about it is kind of convenient and fast. It looks really nice. I like that it's all front access. You don't you can put this under kitchen cabinets and not have to worry about it. It does come with two manuals, a quick start guide and this manual. The manual can be a little uh, tricky to read. It's kind of small and goes over some things are really good and some things it kind of lacks a little bit in the area. I can see though where this coffee maker would be a lot of fun. For somebody in the house that wants to uh, make an an espresso, play around with that, uh, make a cappuccino or latte. It can be a lot of fun. Thanks everybody for watching. If you could, please like and subscribe.